What up? This is the wild boy, the newly reformed, mature boy, Machine Gun Kelly, and you are watching Artisan News. First things first, I want to thank you very much for taking Yeah, dude. How's it been going out on the Warped Tour so far for you? Warped is badass. Because it's grimy. It's dirty. It's loud. It's in your face. It's a lot like me, so I fit in right in on the tour. Uh, I'm a rapper, but, you know, me and, uh, me and a lot of the bands have a lot of common ground. Like, I'm a fan of a lot of the bands on here. and. It was kind of cool. That I didn't know that they were fans of me, which is badass too. So they all come and watch our set. Um, we'll probably borrow a couple of bass players to come play for us. You know, we got a guitarist and a drummer, and that was always the band that we always had. But we never added that bass, so we might f around and borrow a couple for a couple shows. Just have fun, man. We're kind of just getting into the groove. We just did the uh, Jay Leno show last night, so and we had to do like our hometown's radio summer jam. So we've been kind of like in and out. So we haven't just been able to be like routinely on the tour, so we're about to settle down on the tour now. Excellent, yeah. excellent. Ned, do you feel any possible uh, collabos coming out of the, uh, out of here? Shit, I don't fucking know, man. I don't want to try, I don't want to try, you know. Yeah. I feel like they'll be trying if, like, you know, MG, like, I mean, I have a really badass collaboration on my, on my, on my album that's, uh, that's, you know, has one of the, one of the best lead guitarists ever in music and one of the best lead vocalists ever in music on my intro to my album, so. And they're like Warped Tour OG vets, so like. How did that come about? How did that, uh... I think I just spoke it into existence. I was a huge fan of them. I can't really say who it is because I want to be like my, like my surprise. I mean, some people may not understand the collaboration, but the Warp Tour crowd will definitely be like, oh my fucking God, how'd you get them on a track, so. Excellent. How was uh, Leno, by the way? Leno was fucking sick dude he was a G came by and said what's up to us before the show um, you know I was like I mean dude the whole the whole state of Ohio was watching everyone was super proud I'm still my phone's still vibrating on my ass right now from like congratulation texts um, the live band was sick like everything was just everything was perfect man we got wasted afterwards on some, some congratulatory shit it was fun it was such a good time dude how do you look at uh, I look at Invincible like, 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 damn, we just did the Leno show, and we're from Cleveland, Ohio. You know, like, that song is a big, f***ing powerful song, and there was a lot of f***ing raw passion in there, and that shit got, like, you know, my, that, that shit got me to the point where I could say my message on probably one of the most watched shows ever on national TV. You know, it wasn't like a, it wasn't like I was on there, you know, and singing with auto tune and trying to, you know, pop star my way into the limelight. It was like I got to go on there and be myself, and I got to go up there with my friends from back home. And you know, there's a really cool picture. Of me and Slim was my hype man. Also, like my best friend, me and him, like arm and arm together, and we're saying Cleveland boys in the building. And it was really cool. Yeah. What do you think is some of the biggest misconceptions that people have about you? That I'm just a wild mother. I mean, I am a wild motherfucker, but it, that, that it just stops there, you know, people pay attention to that more than my music. You know, they're like, they think I'm like this problem, child, bad attitude, which is all very true, but it also stems from reason, you know, I don't just act wild, and I'm not just, a, have, I don't have, a, I don't have an attitude for no reason, it all comes from a, it all comes from reason, and at the same time, I'm also growing up too, you know, shit. At this time, last year, I didn't have facial hair. I'm starting to look more like a man. It's time to act like a man more. Um, and other than that, you know, any other misconceptions are just, are just hateful. But the only misconception that I could validate would be like that you just view me as a, as a wild child instead of a great artist because sometimes I do look at my shit and I'm like, damn, I'm getting a little out of control. You know, even if it's like tweets, you know, sometimes if you just tweet back to back for weeks, like vulgar shit, like, tweeting people and say I want to stick it in your butt. I mean, I, I'm sure that 
I'm not going to be looked at very uh, high esteemed, I guess. Yeah. Whatever the, f the word is. And, and speaking of, of growing up, I mean, you, you sort of kind of grew up under a microscope here, but you know, let's talk about you know the, the breakout of the Apollo. I mean, what do you remember about that whole experience? That was cool. I feel like it was it was definitely something that was being looked back on. It wasn't like very like publicized at the time, but it, it was a big deal. And I think that's probably my proudest moment in my career. Is outside of the Leno show, that was pretty intense. But you know, it was, um, the first rapper to ever win first place at the Apollo. It's the toughest crowd in the world, so really any crowd after that doesn't get worse. Yeah, except for WrestleMania, that was worse. I got booed by 80,000 people because I was going with a wrestler. Like, I can't believe my took it that serious, but that was pretty harsh. But Apollo was worse, though, because I had more to lose at that time. You know, at that time, I was like, if this doesn't work, then I'm going to, then I might as well just stop because I've been doing it for four or five years and nothing's coming out of it. You know, I keep quitting jobs for this shit. And if I can't make it here, then I, you know, maybe that's a sign that it's just not what, uh, what I need to do. But when I went out there and I heard those boos turn into cheers, that was the shit. that was like, and then like the first, the, when you win first place, you get a check. And it was like the first check I got, which was the first payment I ever got in rap. It was funny, it was like 42 bucks. And it was so it was so small of amount of amount of money that I was like, it, I didn't even uh, I didn't even fucking spend it. I just saved it and framed it. Let me ask you about you know half naked and almost finished. What, what in your opinion was the was the biggest challenge in getting that finished? Well, the thing with that was like it was an EP, and I was like I already didn't agree with the EP because I was like I don't I don't know about that's the right move. We already have mixtapes out. The song that you want to put on the mixtapes are already on this. Shit are already out really you know and then like except for two new songs and the, the thing was became that see my bum bitch Ooh. the thing was is that we had two new songs that were going to go on there and those only five songs on a fucking ep you know so the one new song which was my favorite song and the most emotional song and which it which is also like the song that my fans look for on every project because they want to make sure i'm still the same person and so can connect with them um it was called see my tears and the sample wasn't clearing. And I was like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. And the day before, the, no, no, the day, the morning of that the EP had to be turned in, the sample cleared. Like the morning of the EP being like clear, cause I was, I was right, I, I was like, yo, if this shit goes out and only has four songs on it and only one new song, I'm gonna be so upset, man. You know, and especially since that, that, that one like emotionally connected song wasn't gonna be on there. I was like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. But it cleared the morning of God was just playing with my heart. And I uh, almost had a heart attack. I have a really funny picture of them, uh, of them coming in and telling me the news. It's like of me in bed. I'm, I'm laying on the floor in my friend's house. On the, it's like this, like we put a mattress on the floor and I'm laying on it and like, I wake up, they wake me up to the news, and then we have this picture of me going like this. Uh, like super tired, mad tired, but all I could do is like wake up and be like, fuck yes, I can't believe it cleared. And that ended up being the fan favorite song on the whole thing, so. So let me ask you this, where's the uh, full length at this point? Uh, October, it's done, it's been done for a long time. So, no change of songs on there, same shit, you know. Just been waiting for the right time, I guess the right, amount of hype, which hype has never really surrounded me until now, which is cool, because I earned the hype now. It wasn't like I just had some, like, I dressed funky and all of a sudden everyone was like, oh my God, look at this fucking, you know, fucking monkey, like all these other fucking rappers are, fucking just giant monkeys that just dress up to get looked at and fucking, shit, you fucking monkeys. And I uh, also wanted to find out, what are you most proud of about the album? I'm most, I'm most proud of the cover of the album. The cover of the album is fucking sick. It's like, it's a, uh, it's not my face. It's not me. It just says lace up, and it's a mo it's a mosaic of all the fans lace up tat of, 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 of like a load of lace up tattoos. It's all about the fans. It doesn't get more cool than that. And um, last question. I mean, what would you do, what would success look like to you? How do you define success? Success looks like being able to go out on the stage and still smile. Like when I was on Leno last night, and I saw that smile, I was like, okay, 
That's awesome. I still love this shit. and I still found happiness in like all the, you know, dark shades of gray that the industry puts in like people's heads. So like, you know, when I'm out, when I, you know, when I go out on stage and you don't see that smile anymore, that's probably a time that I'm not enjoying myself anymore. Would that be a time that you walk away? Yeah. But maybe not though, you know, you kill yourself for the fans anyway. You know, you don't like, after a while, like, I, mean, I don't like walking through a warp tour with all these good ass fucking bands and want, and like being staffed 800 times to take pictures and, you know, and then if you don't take a picture, it's fuck you and you're this, it's like, dude, I don't like, I don't like that. Fame is whack, dude. The coolest part though is just being able to like touch people with your songs. If I, if I was smart, I would have came out with a fucking mask on so no one would know who the fuck I was. And I just made raw songs and I could just walk around in public freely and no one would give a fuck about who I am.